cataractcoach.com with the femtosecond laser assisted cataract surgery. When we look at the eye, we see the round capsular axis has already been created, and the plus sign there is, of course, the nuclear division, also created by the femtosecond laser. I actually prefer to make my main incision with a diamond keratome, which I find does a better job, more predictable, with better sealing than using the femtosecond laser for the incision. The eye is filled with viscoelastic, and here we're going to use that diamond keratome in order to make our temporal incision. The femtosecond laser has created a very precise sized capsular axis of 5 millimeters. In addition, it's centered very well in the patient's visual axis. When the incision is made now, we can enter the eye with capsular axis forceps and simply lift up and pinch that central capsulotomy and take it out of the eye. Now we'll proceed with hydrodissection using balanced salt solution on a blood cannula. This is not too dense of a cataract, so the lens should split quite easily and should be easy to emulsify. Careful here, don't prolapse the nucleus out of the capsular bag. The edge of the capsular axis that's created by the femtosecond laser may not be quite as strong as the capsular axis that's created manually. We'll put the phaco probe in the eye and we're just going to simply separate the pieces. So phaco probe is going to go in the eye on a quadrant removal type setting. So higher flow, higher vacuum. Don't need much ultrasound energy in this case. Put the probe in there and we're just going to try to separate the pieces. You don't even have to use the vacuum. We're just using the instruments to mechanically separate the pieces. Now we'll try to aspirate into a quadrant to bring it up and remove it. So again, and a soft cataract like this, we're just looking for a vacuum to hold the piece and then bring the piece anterior or up into the anterior chamber. Take the four pieces down one by one. The chopper here is not used to chop the nucleus per se, but rather just to feed the pieces into the phaco probe. So pushing them around, keeping the pieces in front of the phaco probe. That looks great. Chopper now goes into protective position to make sure the posterior cap doesn't come forwards. So just like that, the nucleus is removed and we'll move to irrigation aspiration. There's a little bit of light subconjunctival hemorrhage there, especially in the surgeon's view temporally, just under the main incision. And that's from the suction ring that we used for the femtosecond laser. Irrigation aspiration probe used to remove the cortex as well as any little epinucleus that remains. So was there a big benefit in this case to using the femtosecond laser? Not really. It didn't decrease phaco energy appreciably. We could have chopped the nucleus with the chopper instead of having the laser subdivided for us. And of course, we can certainly create our own capsorexis. Uh, an expert surgeon can create a very consistent capsorexis greater than 99% of the time. In this case, we used the femtosecond laser for patient preference. This patient had heard about it and was very much in favor of having it used on her own eyes. So we, of course obliged and use the femtosecond laser. Cortex is basically removed now and then we'll clean up a little bit more and put the lens in. Using the femtosecond laser does speed up certain aspects of things so once we go to the OR to start the procedure with the rectus already done and the nucleus already divided it makes for a very efficient case. The total case time here is approximately five or six minutes. Keep in mind we also have to go to the same operating room and then use the laser to create the capsulotomy, create the nuclear division, and of course, that takes time. Using viscoelastic now to fill the anterior chamber, as well as the capsular bag, and we'll place our lens inside the capsular bag. The edge of the capsulotomy here, when we use the femtosecond laser, it does look a little thicker, a little bit more opaque compared to when we tear it in a capsular axis. Here comes a single piece acrylic monofocal lens. We'll place that into good position and let the haptics unfold. We'll then be able to see that the capsulotomy actually is five millimeters, and that is a very appropriate size for this six millimeter optic. Lens being rotated just slightly in order to facilitate going behind the lens to fully remove viscoelastic. Here we lift up on the lens, go behind it to remove that viscoelastic. And once that's completed, we'll remove the viscoelastic from the anterior segment as well. The four ink marks that you see on the eye are in the cardinal meridians. Those are made ahead of time, just for orientation. 
particularly when we put the suction ring down on, down on the eye, we want to have it oriented in a certain way if we're using the laser to create limbal relaxing incisions. That looks pretty good. Coming towards the end of the case here, all that's remaining is basically sealing up the incisions. So there you have it. We can certainly use a femtosecond laser for cataract surgery. Hard to justify sometimes the additional cost. It is a lot more expensive, about a half million dollars for the laser, and at least a few hundred dollars per patient um, of usage fees. Often that can be even higher. But in certain cases, it could be a benefit. In this one, not so much.